Welcome back to YouTube's favorite series. I don't actually know that to be correct, but I like to think that it's more than likely not. Ah, today's the Fan Showdown Season 4, Episode 3, and if you're new here, this is where you out there try, you know, your hand at making what you think the best PC cooling fan is, or at least the weirdest creation. <laughs> oh my. And uh, you send them to me, I print them out, we test them and take a look at them online and have a good time. Now, if you want to try your hands at uh, getting on to the show, head over to my Thingiverse account, download the reference drawings. There's some models there if you need them. And send me at least a finished STL model to the fan showdown at gmail.com. Check the link in the description below. I'll have links to everything you need down there. Now, let's check out what we have on the docket today. Thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. Micro Center is one of the best places to shop for all your technology needs, and if you're like me, you might even live within driving distance to a Micro Center location. Having a Micro Center nearby has saved my bacon more than once, most notably that one time uh, I fried my GPU while trying to build that custom shroud. Remember that? Yeah. Now, Micro Center is probably most well known for its PC hardware, but they also carry. 3D printers. And I'll be honest, I didn't even know this until the last time I was walking through Micro Center looking for some PC cooling hardware and happened to notice all the filament and printers they had in stock. Micro Center is actually one of the only places you can find a wide selection of 3D printers and materials, but not everyone is easily able to drive to a Micro Center location, but that's not a problem. You can browse all of their parts online at microcenter.com, and if you prefer, you can even shop the Micro Center Amazon store to pick up all the filament you need. However, if you do have a Micro Center nearby, they are currently offering a $99 coupon towards an Ender 3D Pro. This is a no purchase necessary offer to new customers in store only. So if you're wanting to get into 3D printing, check out microcenter.com or head into one of your local stores today. And thank you again to Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. Now, first up, we have a fan called the CS64CCF, which was designed by Crosby Man 64. Now, given what we've seen lately on the show, the CS64CCF is much more tame or traditional. However, even though the design looks tame or traditional, there is a bit of a backstory to why things are shaped the way they are. For the CS64, the CCF part of that name stands for Siloid Curve Fan. Now, a Siloid Curve is basically... I need my, my little demo here. But imagine if there's a point on this ring of this fan, and as this fan rolled along this computer, that point would make a curve. Now that curve is what was used to design the sweep of the blades. Now Crosby Man said that the outer ring is just for stability, but a lot of people like the look of a fan with an outer ring. And this one is not that bad looking. I don't know how well it'll perform, but it's been a while since we've seen a fan fan. Oh, and it was easy to print, which always makes uh, me happy. Now this, this next fan is probably the most relatable fan in the history of the fan showdown. I don't even really need to tell you anything about this fan. As soon as you see it, you're gonna be like, oh. I know what it's going for, and I've done it before. This is the Handy Fan, and I don't even need to tell you what the inspiration behind this fan is, or really anything else, because we've all done exactly what this fan is out is set out to do today. Now, for some reason, if that's not clicking for you, do you remember back when you were younger, or yesterday, when you stuck your hand out the window of your car while you or somebody else was driving, and you moved your hand up and down, and you noticed how much the wind pushed your arm up and down. Well, Loki Parts, which is who designed the handy fan, also remembered that and decided, you know what? I bet we could make a fan like that. So that's what he did. So what we got here is a fan comprised of eight hands ready to catch the breeze. It'd be like this. Now I do, <laughs> I think Loki Parts did a great job of making the hands look anatomically correct. I don't know about you, but there's something you just look at this fan, it's a bit jarring seeing all these hands reach out. It's like they want to just like shake your hand. That's enough of that. Now on this show, we, we tend to see two, two main types of fans. We see the standard axial flow fan, which is basically all computer fans. And then every now and then we see a centrifugal flow fan, which is like a blower fan. Well, this next one is a little bit of both. This is the double duty and it was created by Cameron. And I should say that Cameron didn't give it the name Double Duty, I did, because he didn't give it a name at all, and I thought Double Duty was pretty fitting for what this fan sets out to do. Around the outside of the, the Double Duty, you'll find normal blade, axial blade type fan blades. That was a, 
That was good English. But uh, that's what you see on the outside. You see a normal fan around the outside. Now, in the inside is where things get a little different. Like on this fan, the CS64, you got just a hub. Most fans, you have a hub. But uh, Cameron's like, we don't, no hubs. Instead, what he's done is he's tried to package. Well, I guess he hasn't tried. He has done. He has packaged a centrifugal inspired fan or centripetal inspired fan in the middle. Now, Cameron said the idea here is that the outer blades will provide the bulk of the airflow. And what he's hoping happens in the middle rather than, you know, normally you'd have air hitting the hub and then going into the fan like normal. He's hoping that this center centripetal fan at the center will instead take that air that would normally strike the hub and move off into the blades and instead accelerate it down the center of the airstream. So you'd have nice big airflow around the outside. Think high bypass fan, high, high flow around the outside and then high speed in the middle. Will it work? I don't know. But I do like the out of the box thinking because if anything, again, it looks cool and that's half the battle. Now the last fan, we have a bit more industrial type thinking today. This is the Caterpillar 3406C and it was designed by Carl. Now you might be thinking that is a pretty specific name for this fan. What could that mean? Let me tell you. One day, while Carl was working on his semi truck, he noticed that his Caterpillar 3406C engine had a pretty large fan. He turned on the ignition key and when the fan kicked on, he was very surprised at how much power it had. It was at that moment he decided, you know, if it's good enough for a big old diesel engine, it's good enough for a PC. So that's what he did here. He took that engine fan and basically shrunk it down to uh, the size of the A12X25 fan body. And we're gonna see if this big old Caterpillar well, now it's a small old Caterpillar fan. It's really as good as it seemed to be on that beastly engine. Let's first listen to it. When it comes to sound, the CS64 comes in at 47 dBA. The Caterpillar 3406C came in at 51.5 dBA. The Double Duty came in at 45.3 dBA. And the handy fan came in at 50.5 dBA. Now just a couple of things before we go on to the smoke test about the sound. The first one being the Caterpillar. When you listen to the sound of the Caterpillar, I don't know about you, but to me, it just reminds me of like that sound, you know, when you're sitting in your car in like a parking lot or at a red light in like the hot sun, and all of a sudden you hear your electric motor turn on fan start spinning to cool down your radiator. That's exactly what this sounds like to me. Is it shocking? No, because that's kind of what the design of this was, but just it just seemed weird to me to listen to that sound and just immediately think of sitting in traffic, listening to my car, like scream how hot it is. And I will also say that the sound produced by the handy fan wasn't really what I expected. Now, I don't know what I expected to hear, but it wasn't that. Let's talk about smoke now. Looking at all these fans side by side, they all do pretty decently, but I don't know. It looks like the Caterpillar to me is producing the highest airflow. What do you think? I mean, you have seen as many of these smoke tests as I have. Which, which one of these fans do you think is at the top spot? In the airflow test, the CS64 came in at 492 feet per minute. The Caterpillar 3406C came in at 601 feet per minute. The Double Duty came in at 466 feet per minute. 
and the handy fan came in at 441 feet per minute. Placing the Caterpillar in first place, the CS64 in second, the Double Duty in third, and the handy fan in fourth. And overall, what I thought was interesting though is that all these fans basically stuck together in the overall rankings. They all finished seventh through 10th respectively. And uh, although nothing made the board today, it's always, this is always such a fun time. So if you wanna get into the fan showdown, make sure to uh, get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the next episode. Head down to the description, check out all the links, take, go to basically go to my Thingiverse, get the drawings and the models, start working on whatever creation you can think of, and then send it to me at Gmail, or I'm at thefanshowdown at gmail.com, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.